our goal here was not to be able to view every single component of a photorealistic tree, right? Which would include, uh, you know, bump mapping and texture mapping of bark and, and um, you know, texture mapping of the leaves and that kind of thing, but rather to provide a tool for artists to procedurally generate realistic branch structures and leaf patterns. So I'm just gonna show you how you would go about using our app to generate this nice leafy tree. So to do that, I'm gonna set some of these things back to zero. And hopefully in the process, I'll be able to explain what a lot of these parameters that I'm moving right now mean. Cool. So for us, a tree starts with a mathematical object called an L system. And an L system is basically a very compact way of representing a fractal, which is a mathematically self-similar object. You can imagine that this is really good for representing trees because trees' branch structures are inherently self-similar. So we have a couple different L systems implemented here. One is this simple 2D binary tree. And you can see as we increase or decrease the recursive depth, um, we get more and more branches, basically. So we can then move to the ternary tree, right? This is a, still a very simple example, but now in three dimensions. And we can actually generate fractals that don't have a branching structure as well. That's how general L systems are. So we can generate this Sierpinski triangle. The L system we're going to be using is the stochastic maple L system. And the reason this is called a stochastic L system is because its branching structure is non-deterministic. And what that means is that if I regenerate it a couple times, we'll get different branching structures because there's an element of randomness. So now I'm going to tweak some of these parameters over here to make this look a little bit nicer. So the trunk radius parameter controls just the overall thickness of the branches, and I kind of like where we have it set right now. And similarly, the radial decay and length decay sliders here control how the radius and the length of the branches vary with their depth in the tree. So if I put it all the way over here, you'll see that the branches at the ends are really, really skinny, and here they get thicker. So I'll set it right around there. And the length decay, similar, similar story. Great, that looks good. Now we can you know, say that this looks like a tree, and it does look kind of like a tree, but it doesn't look like a very photorealistic tree. And one reason is because it looks very uniform and very symmetric. So something we can do to remedy that is we can introduce stochasticity into the actual components of the mesh, as opposed to just the abstract branching structure. So we can use length stochasticity to get some variation in the length of the branches. We can use some radial stochasticity to get some bumps along the branches. And most importantly, we can use orientation stochasticity to vary the orientation of the branches. Great, so I think that looks pretty good right there. And one thing at this point that you'll notice is that yes, it you know it does look kind of nice and non-uniform, but there's certain branches that just don't look like physically possible. You know, like maybe this one up here, or sort of like this whole branch like coming up through here. You would think that it would bend more under the influence of gravity. So what you can do to fix that is actually simulate bending of the branches due to gravity. So here we have this slider to control the strength of the gravitational force, and you'll notice that as we sort of pull it up, we get some branches that start to bend over, right, um, and and bend under the influence of gravity. And, and this sort of helps to remedy that problem of some branches just looking not even physically possible. Um, and finally, we can add some leaves to our tree. So we have a leaf density parameter here that controls how many leaves there are. I like this set around two or three for this one. And we can modify the shape of the leaves. So, you know, longer leaves could maybe give us something that looks more like a, you know, some bay leaves, right? And, uh, and sort of shorter and wider leaves, you know, can give us that cherry blossom kind of look. Um, but we're going to set it to something like right around here. I think it looks pretty good.